I have disabled monetization to show you this video isn't about views, watch hours, or jumping on the hype train. It's purely about spreading this message. I hope you enjoy. Let me start this video out by saying, I love Genshin. It is a great game from the story, the gameplay, to the open world. There's just so much unique to this game that it does right that I genuinely want to see this game succeed. That is exactly why I can't sit in silence after witnessing everything that's been going on recently. After I posted my latest video about the recent drama, I openly said I don't know what side of the fence I should be on and I just want to have a discussion with you guys in the comments. And I thank each and every one of you guys. I've enjoyed reading literally as much comments as I humanly can. I was literally up until 6, 7 a.m. That was partially because I was procrastinating but that's besides the point. Whether you are a new player enjoying the game or a old veteran that's been playing since patch 1, from reading your comments, I've gathered there's two major arguments here. Obviously a simplification, but let's keep going. One, the game is fine and everyone else is ungrateful. You shouldn't even be asking for more. Two, we deserve better, whether that be rewards or more gameplay. That's the gist of it. Now, if you were to ask me before this video, I would actually sit in that first group. But that's because I'm kind of dumb and I'm happy just because we can sit down in random chairs in Genshin. I'm very easily impressed and I never quite play games how you're supposed to. I enjoy making solo character builds and level 1 character challenges. Seriously, this is, this is some of my videos. I'm not normal. But if you're content about sitting in random chairs around Teva and throwing level 1 characters around at bosses, doesn't mean I shouldn't try to look away and avoid the problem everyone else is talking about. Just because I'm having fun doesn't mean I should not use my platform to at least talk about some of these problems. Especially when you guys come and click and watch my videos. I may not be as big as some of the other creators, that also means I'm not too scared to talk about things without being shot down. Because I quite frankly have nothing to lose. This YouTube channel doesn't even give me the money needed for my gambling addiction in Genshin. That's where my student bursary comes in instead. So I don't really care about speaking up, not getting uh, sponsorships or deals with MiHoYo because I don't have any in the first place and I don't get that many views anyway. So if this video goes out there with 100 views, then at least I tried. Now, I get it. A lot of you guys probably don't even have a problem with Genshin and that's perfectly fine. You may play the game for the next six months, one year, who knows, and be perfectly content with the game. But for a game like this, to be successful long term, we need more people to be happy about it. It's not okay to be silent and just sit in our own small bubbles. We just need more forms of end game and long form content. Spiral Abyss just isn't enough. I don't even like Spiral Abyss. Honkei Star Rail has implemented plenty, so I know they are capable. And they've done all the hard work. I mean, how hard would it be to reuse some boss assets and have a time trial mode for example? Obviously that's a trashy example I made in 2 seconds. But you get the idea. We're not reinventing the wheel here. So I know we we can hold the Genshin devs to some form of standard because they are capable, they are competent. So we can't use that argument here. I know Honkai and Genshin are two different games, but we're not going to entertain this argument right now. We need Genshin to be better. That That's it. Now that does not mean Genshin is bad before you say anything. Genshin is amazing, I just want it to be one of the greatest games of all time. And I don't think there's necessarily a problem right now but the problem will show its face when it's too late to do anything. And I'd rather we tackle this before it gets to that point. Now, I know I'm really downplaying it. The way Hoyoverse have been treating Genshin and its fanbase just is not acceptable. Especially with the recent drama, you know everything about it. If you need to get up to speed, watch, watch this video or any video on Genshin that's currently out at the moment. Seriously, it's, it's gone pretty insane. But here's the thing, everyone is saying the same message without doing anything. Everyone is sitting on the fence without trying to push anything and ultimately saying what is the point. Now that leads us on to the next point. For those of you who are going to argue this is stupid, why even bother we can't change anything, just wait until the end for the rebuttal for the usual arguments okay? After you sat through the video and you disagree with me then put it down in the comments otherwise you're wasting both of our times here. So here's the thing, recently there's been a lot of drama going around and I don't even mean about the CN and the Lantern Rite event. Before that we had drama with Doro44 for even enjoying the game. Seriously, this is, this is crazy. I do see why people would potentially get upset, as stupid as this drama is, and this is not me justifying this drama or community, it, it's, it's mind blowing. But I do see why. They would get upset because a lot of people just can't understand how someone can be happy with this game when 
a lot of people, and I mean a lot of people, are just not. And I know there's a massive, massive group of you that are extremely happy. But there's a large, large amount of people that who are unhappy, who are very sad about what has happened to Genshin, which is most likely, you know, one of their ex-favorite games, but because of the continued treatment from Hoyoverse, they now don't feel like that anymore. Hence why they are so loud on platforms like Twitter. Back to the argument about Doro. A lot of people would argue he's just being disingenuous and putting up a facade for views, which is... That's a fair point. A lot of people just don't like that about YouTubers nowadays. They will do anything for views, whatever they can do. Fake reactions or, you know, you know the typical stuff. But I don't believe this is something that Doro does. I believe he genuinely enjoys the game because it's, it's not really that impossible to believe if you think about it. Yes, it is perfectly possible to enjoy the game and be excited about the updates, even if the updates aren't game-changing updates every single month. Funny how people weren't reacting like this where Genshin was dropping 4.1 on 4.2, massive game breaking changes. But yes, of course you're going to have a dull patch every now and again. And you know it's because of the lantern, right? You know, same points, I get it. But this is a reoccurring pattern we've had. We've had massive drama in year one. We've had massive dramas in events from 3.7, etc. last time. But I think it's time we tackle this problem instead of avoiding it. Also, if you could buy Infinite Resin, this game would be pretty fun. I cannot lie. So hey, if I was a YouTuber with infinite money to pay for resin, I would probably be playing all day making dumb characters. But unfortunately, I am constantly pulled away from the game because I cannot afford to put my money into resin. But if I did, I'd be having a lot of fun. Now back to the main point. I have been doing a bit of research and looking into why some of the main Genshin creators play the game and their justifications. Now, what I have seen is that most of these big creators have their own, uh, how to put it, personal end game. Whether it be building all characters, finding the best team comps possible, seeing the story to completion. But you see the thing is, these are kind of individual end goals. Like for me, it's throwing level one characters at bosses and sitting in chairs. But for someone else, it's building every character to level 90 that comes out. Uh, it's not a communal shared goal. You could make an argument for the story, but at the rate we're going, I don't know if we'll see the completion of the story. So it's very hard to have a common goal in the game when we don't kind of have one for the more serious meta players. Now, I've always used the word meta in literal air quotes because how can you have a meta with a game that doesn't really have an endgame, apart from Spiral Abyss? And uh, hard to justify a meta in the first place. Even when I first started playing, I was a bit confused to the reason why I was building these characters. And it's something I did not understand for a long time. Because I, I straight up did not see the reason why I do it. I played the game, but I never agreed with the reason why I was playing. I was like, why, why am I doing this? And then now I'm, I'm too far in. Uh, I've spent too long, so I now enjoy it. This is probably Stockholm Syndrome, but yes. Now, if we all had a communal end goal or goal, it'd be a lot easier to share our experiences and not be as bitter for the game. We'd be able to support the game long term, and currently, honestly, there's only two routes for a Genshin player. It goes like this. You either get bored and leave and play something else. Now, that's not a bad thing, by the way. That's just kind of a typical game life cycle. Or become one of those really bitter ex-Genshin players we see hiding and lurking in all of these Genshin videos. Guarantee you there's going to be quite a few hiding in this one as well, telling me it is pointless. Now, of course, when you're as passionate about a game like Genshin fans are, when you leave, you'd probably be pretty bitter just because of how passionate Genshin players are. I don't really see that as unfathomable. So, I'm gonna cut to the chase, as I'd rather have more people listen to the main message of the video instead of padding this out. And I'm looking at <laughs> it's already been quite a while. But anyway, we'll get, we'll get straight into it. Now, if we want Genshin to succeed long term, firstly, we have to provide a better experience for the player. And for more of them, it's not okay if 10%, 30%, or 50% of the player base is happy while the other 50 is secretly trying to cope, okay? I know Genshin Copium is a meme, but I'm beginning to think it's a bit more than just a meme at this point, all right? We need the long-term players of Genshin, the veteran players to actually be happy and not just be holding out. Genshin doesn't matter right now because the influx of new players surpasses the players leaving. Why does it matter to them People are going to leave, but they have new people to come in and obviously then go through their cycle playing for one, two years, being perfectly happy, loving the game, and then leaving. It doesn't make sense from a business perspective. They won't do anything to change it unless they have to, because they're still making... Honestly, the scientific way to put this is they are making bank. Now, I don't know if that's UK slang, but that means they're making a lot of money for those of you guys that did not understand. Now, this doesn't mean we demand for more rewards. And that's not the point of this video. I don't care if I get a free temple because 
I'm probably going to lose my 50-50 anyway, let's be honest. Personally, myself, and clearly many other people here are no longer interested. It's, it's too late for that. We will cross that bridge. It's burnt, okay? It's done. I don't, I don't want new Primo Gems anymore. I mean, I do. Let's think about something else for now. We want proper quality of life changes. So, I hate to say it, but probably a more revamped commission system closer to HSR. Fixing the mess that you gave us for artifacts. Seriously, what was that? We all know that it was atrocious. Please do better. What was this? As well as proper end game content people can actually sink some time into. This is the only way to push Genshin to new heights and bring in even more success for the game. So anyway, it's a win-win for Hoyoverse. More players stay long term, they get more money, and fans are more happy, willing to support the game for another, who knows, 10 years if they do this right? At the end of the day, if you don't ask, you don't get. And that's the problem here, and that's honestly why this has gone to this point. We don't ask because one, we either get called ungrateful, or two, a lot of people just honestly lose their Alright, that's just how it is. Three, or oh, oh, we just we just got copium. Now you have to understand there is nothing wrong with asking for more from a billion dollar game company that we've been supporting for years. We did not have to wait for them to laugh in our faces about supporting for three years and giving three intertwined fate. Seriously, they, they can do more, alright? Billions of dollars is not a joke. That's how much money they get. They can work harder. I know Hoyoverse manages, what, like three, four, five games? But with the money they're making, they can get more devs. I think it's enough time for excuses for them. And, it, and you know, we, we put... I gotta, put me, I gotta first. put me first. So like I said, there's nothing wrong with respectfully asking for better updates in Genshin and asking for the game to be improved. Because we all have a common goal of wasting too many hours playing silly video games. Okay? I think we can all agree on that. So, here's what's gonna happen. I'm going to personally stop giving money to Hoyoverse. Now this is really painful as I just made it to the end of the battle pass and I was just waiting to buy it. So this this hurts me. Until we get some changes or evidence of them attempting to implement them in the future. I really hope they miss the $5 a month they get from me. And the occasional 10 for the battle pass. Which was gonna be this month. So I hope you're happy. Now that's really gonna hurt them. Number two, posting on Twitter and other platforms. Hashtag Boycott Genshin. Now, I know the word Boycott Genshin sounds harsh, but we have to be harsh at this point. It's not coming from a negative place, it is coming from a positive place trying to enforce change for me, you, and everyone else so we can support the game long term. So I'm sorry if a bit of tough love is needed, but yes. Hashtag Boycott Genshin. We deserve better quality of life changes and end game content. If we spread this message enough, then I believe we can make a change instead of just being silent all of the time. Now, the only way companies ever respond to anything is literally through Twitter. Now, that's the only purpose of Twitter is to spam big companies. Prove me wrong. Oh yeah, and being toxic as hell. But I don't care about that second point. And number three, sharing this message across. Write in the comment section what you want changed. Throw in the hashtag Boycott Genshin as well. Also, on other YouTubers videos or pages, obviously don't spam, but I want this message to go out as much as possible. Share it in your videos, I don't care, steal the video if you want, I don't care. I'd rather people talk about this issue than me trying to get a few views, alright? So, share the video around if you agree with my points. Ultimately, I want a larger creator to take this message forward, as I'm too small of a creator and I don't care whatever happens because... I earn like five pounds a month. I just hope someone watches this and passes it on. If we do not speak up, then nothing will change. And by the way, we are allowed to speak in a respectful way. We don't need this to turn into another dumpster fire, okay? There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I would like to see these changes implemented if we do it in a respectful manner. And it does not mean we hate Genshin either. And of course, it got to the point where people were boycotting and technically I would consider this a boycott, but this is a boycott for the correct reasons because now I've become an activist for Genshin. I'm going to put this on my LinkedIn profile. Professional Genshin activist. Also, for this to work, we need to have a clear message. And I think endgame plus proper quality of life changes is pretty good as it solves many, many problems of the game. Now, I'm not going to discuss that here because the video will just be padded out too long. But from all the comments I've read, these are the two biggest problems. Listen to the audience and the two things people talk about constantly is quality of life updates and proper end game content systems with the rewards. Of course, throw in whatever issues you have with the game, but let's keep the message as concise as we possibly can. I just don't want to wake up to boycott Genshin, give me 1000 wishes or I will jump. Now, for the common arguments about this for those people who are interested. 
The EN group is too small, we barely make up anything of the game. That may be true if it is, but even if we do make up an extremely small portion of the player base, we still add up to something. If it was as small as you guys pretend, then why would they even give us updates in the first place? It would not make sense. Why would they push it to a global audience? It's because we give them substantial money, alright? We give them a lot of money. Think about it from a business perspective. It costs them a lot of money to hire voice and produce the English patches on top of, you know, the Chinese patches they probably make first, okay? To make these patches for English are not cheap, as well as hosting the game on European, American, and global servers, as well as database and other technical mumbo jumbo and buzzwords to make myself feel smart. But at the end of the day, it costs them money to give the game to us because we give them more money back. Also, the changes we want aren't that big and honestly can be easily implemented. I am a I'm bit of a developer myself. myself. By that I mean, I make, I barely know how to code and I'm a mess. But I understand how much of a pain it is to go back and make some of these changes. But it is possible with the scale of Hoyoverse themselves. I've seen over 10 year old games have full on revamps and have had complete overhauls of the entire game with a lot less money to spare. So it is possible. And honestly, at the end of the day, they just think we don't care about it and we'll just keep giving them money. I mean, we do, but I'd like that to stop. At the end of the day, money talks and it's the only thing these companies listen to. And for that reason, I will no longer be spending money on Genshin. I know me not spending $5 is not going to do anything, but it's about spreading a message. And oh boy, does it hurt. I made it to level 46 in the battle pass. Think about it. If they lose even 10% of their profit, they are not going to let that slide. That's quite frankly millions and millions of dollars to them. And would you like to lose 10% of your income for something you can implement very fast? If I was to tell you, you're going to lose, let's say you make a thousand pounds and I take 10 pounds away from you just because you don't want to do the bins. You'll go do the bins to get your 100 pound back, especially because it wouldn't be that hard and we'll help you are in the long run. Sitting in filth is not going to be good long term. So it's a win-win. So if you enjoyed, subscribe. If not, feel free to roast me in the comments. Now, I really gotta get back to writing my thesis instead of YouTube scripts. Alright, see ya.